Hey guys, it's Lindy here, and today I'm going to show you how you can make a teapot. And this teapot is inspired from Alice in Wonderland. It's the teapot that the little mouse is always in. And I also just want to say that this is a collab with the Geeky Unicorn. All of her information will be in the description box below. So, yeah. She also did an Alice in Wonderland themed video. And I just also want to say that this video could be for back to school. Well, it is because what you can do is you could put rubber bands, you could put clothes pins. I know that's not related to school, but probably put erasers and this little teapot. It depends on how big you make it. So yeah, let's get started. So first, what you're going to want to do is, and I already have made these, is what you want to do is make two flat circles about the same thickness. You can use a cookie cutter, but you don't have to. I made one and then I got another piece of clay and I just cut it around it. And you want one of the circles just to be a little bit bigger. So like if you cut it and when you cut around it and you look up, it's a little bit big. It's no big deal because you want just a little bit, not like a much. You see how this basically looks like, but you can see like a little extra here, some extra like here, so it's all okay. And also what I did was I textured just one side of both. You don't have to, but I like it. I think it looks more like made. So once you do both of those, then you're going to get a piece of clay and you're going to roll it long ways. And then you're going to roll it out. So I rolled out the two sides, so I just want to show you how to roll out the middle. I'm actually, you could use a rolling pin, but I'm just actually going to use some paint. So once you have it all rolled out, like so, because what you're doing is you all you're going to do is get a piece of clay and you're going to roll it sideways and then you're just going to roll it down. But you want to make sure it can go all the way around. So once you roll it, now it's going to be longer because before when you it wasn't rolled. You want it to be like that, it went all the way around, and now that it is, there'll be extra because when you roll it, it just, there will be extra because you smoothed it all out. So once you do that, you're going to cut any of the excess clay, and then you're going to attach it to the bottom. And I'm using white clay for this because I like to paint it, but if you want, you can use yellow clay. It'll make it simpler, but I just like getting like the almost the exact coloring. And if you are going to paint it, I suggest if you use the Craft Smart paint, you use light yellow. This one. Sorry, I just want to get back to it. Oh no, I just chipped it a little bit with my scissor. It's alright. I feel like every single placemat that I use, something always happens to it. But this one isn't too bad. You barely notice it. So perfect. So once you have it all around, you want to connect it better to the bottom. So you're just going to press it all close together. You're going to connect the two sides. You're going to put some texture all around it.
So, like, if you could put this on your desk, you could put rubber bands, erasers, you could put things, you know those things that you put on paper to put them close um, together? I'm not sure what they're called, but you can put those in there. You can put a lot of different things in this. And it all depends on the size that you make. Okay, so once you do that, you're going to look and you're going to see that this is a little bit wider. And that's okay. Then you want to make sure that the whole thing is all leveled. What you can do is what I'm doing right now is you're putting it upside down on your work surface and you're just pinching like you're just pressing together like the bottom it's kinda hard to explain like you're putting it and you're just pressing all around so that it's even with this piece And then it's also all flat and even. And when you put this on, there's a little border, but that's okay. Because you just could pinch it all the same. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just remember you could put paper clips. That's what holds paper together. Sorry, I totally forgot there. You could put paper clips in here. You could put staples to it for a stapler. You could do a lot of things. So once you have done this step, which was a little hard to explain, but all you were doing is you just took the like the bottom part, you just put it upside down, and you just pressed it all around inwards and once you do that you're just going to make sure it's all good like get your finger move it around and just so that you know even though that if you're doing it how I'm doing it and painting it you will see it still see the bumps and like the little fuzzies so make sure you put some nail polish remover after you bake it because if you do it beforehand it can cause a fire so make sure you do it afterwards and then you can paint. And then you gloss. <laughs> okay, so just make sure everything's good. You want to make sure it's all perfect. So then once you have that, you're going to put this to the side. And right now you're going to quickly make a little handle. So you're going to draw some clay, now you're going to make it like long and like thin, but not too thin because what you're going to do is you're going to curve it just like this, and then you're going to cut, I'm using a scissor but you can use a crafting knife. And you're going to cut it so that both sides are even. And then you're going to cut like the divider, like what connects it together. You're going to put them close together, just like this. And then you're going to twist. You don't have to do the twisting part, but I just think it looks much cooler. So once you twist it, then you're going to make a handle. If it's too big, like mine, just cut off some of the bottom or like a part of the twist that you don't like. Just cut that off. Then you can look again. You can cut this again until you find the perfect length. And you're going to press that on. Then once you do that, you're going to go take it and you're going to make a little spout. So what you're going to do is get some clay. You want it pretty thick. 
You want the top part to be thick and you want the bottom part to be skinnier. Just like this. Then you're going to get a dotting tool and you are going to make a little hole but you don't want it to go through to the bottom. You're going to make a few little holes and to make it look like the pouring part where if there was liquid in here you can pour it out. You could press it down on your work surface to make it help you better. So once you do that you're going to go and attach it to your pot. Just like that. So once you do that you're going to go and get some clay, roll it into a circle, texture that as well, <laughs> you could just like roll it, if you have a toothbrush I suggest that would be easier but you can also use tin foil and just roll it around and then the part with the more texture you want to put it that that part like you'll see more so you want to put it on the top and you're going to stick it right in the middle this will be the handle of your little teapot then what you do is you'll bake it but you won't bake it the lid on top you'll bake it just like this two separate and then once you take it out of the oven, because you have to bake it what your instructions say, then you're going to mix these two paints together, paint the teapot, and then with a pink, this is bright pink, I might mix it with white, and you're going to put little hearts all around the teapot, and then you are done. If you want to see what the finishing teapot will look like, it will be on the thumbnail of this video, and I'll also post a picture on Google+. So this is the end of this video. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and also check out the Geeky Unicorn. Thank you. Bye-bye.